morning, everyone. Yeah. Boy, back to um, Baba Roots situation, I know. Um, may I get you to understand that Baba Roots did have a lot of fire, um, and he um, got some funeral almost a week. And when I work with him and him in some altercation, I don't know if I have money or what. You know, him and him get in our argument and Baba Roots pulling fire and man shoot the youth in the mouth. The youth never did. But if a lady take with the man gun or whosoever do the report, you know, based off of what people are saying things, then, then take with the gun. Because that's what FLA really do, you know, them listen other people's story. Or this way, they don't want to hear your story you now, but yet, them not understand so the reason why you get your gun is to protect yourself, right? Now, the thing about the whole situation and story you now is, to me, is FLA really caused this man death, you know? Because if the man did have a firearm, then boy, you could hook up on the man then we are so easy then, they wouldn't have your thing twice. And why I say it caused him, in a split second, probably when he realized in here, intruders are coming upon him, he can't do nothing. You understand? Because he don't have a gun to protect himself. And I'm going to look back and he says, sad. It's sad. See, like it's a firearm holder out there where he might just make a, a move and then how he look, you know, look justify, say, the person will not attack you, right? And then take away your gun and then I'll check it out. Criminal know that and come upon you. Right? But how me see it, you know? <laughs> so how me see it right now if you put certain things to perspective, you say, I really FLA make this a man get into that situation because boy out there know, say, you know, having a gun. A boy know out there say, yo, FLA take away gun and in in have the powers they like so them then a four of them go on for them over me here you know take out in wind and thing you know. another thing I blame him for don't have no dog in our yard that me get you understand so but the one uh if I let you get look a pinch of it too man yeah or well, so me see it on the spot news media we got the latest news we don't care about the views we just representing right put local news internationally every night on the spot wave that jamaican flag from left to right let's get it right y'all know the type we ain't dealing with the hype we make it take flight yeah man my viewers and subscribers what uh guan a blessed and wonderful Wednesday morning to each and every person out there tuning into on the spot news media. Now, my peeps, I don't know how we do it to on this side each and every morning. We have to give thanks and praise to the Most High Creator for the preservation of life because life is indeed the greatest. So, now the morning, my peeps, I have a few stories to share with you, the regular members of Chan Public and also members of the diaspora. So, please like the video, share the video, watch the entire vlog so you can get a full understanding and a better appreciation of everything we are going in Jamaica. So watch this now my peeps, we are going to kick it off over there with some international news coming out of our neighboring island, the Cayman Islands, where the Cayman police have confirmed the loss of life of a Jamaican man. Now the man in question is presently on your screen and he has since been identified as 26 year old Adrian Williamson who was reported missing July of last year. The cause of his loss of life has not yet been released. But what on the spot news media do know is that Williamson was resided in Georgetown in the Cayman Islands at the time of his disappearance. His remains were found in a secluded section of the mangroves on November 30. So the authorities did their checks did the due diligence and found out that it was indeed the remains of the 26 year old Jamaican man Adrian Williamson. So I'm pretty sure that the family, friends and well wishers of Adrian has gotten some sort of closure as to his disappearance. Now they await the cause of his loss of life. Yeah man.
So anyway, my peeps, back to local style. Well, whole heap of bangarang in a Jamaica, as always. But first, let me give you an update. An update on the attempt robbery of the beryllium team over there in Manchester. Now, the police have taken one man into custody into the connection with Monday's attempted robbery of the beryllium team in Grey Ground, Manchester. The man is in the hospital presently after he was canned up during an exchange of gunfire between the robbers and the security guards. Now we are here from Senior Superintendent of Police, Stephanie Lindsay, Head of the Corporate Communications Unit of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, as she weighs in on this latest round of beryllium robberies. Listen. Based on what we gathered so far, the guys were able to apply their training and they ordered the attempt and the money and the guard were brought to a safe location. At the end of the shooting, there was an exchange of fire between the security and the gunmen. One man was found with a gunshot and a firearm found at the location. The police, due to their investigation, led them to another individual that was found with gunshot. He was identified as one of the men who had um, attacked the guard. So we have that person in custody. So as I stated in yesterday morning's vlog, one of the criminal elements was taken out by the security guards. Now that criminal element is presently on your screen. Yeah man. And bet uno couldn't tell me which part the old dirty kind of boy I come from. Over there in the troubled, war-torn, crime-riddled Kingston Western Police Division. This criminal element here, presently on your screen, is from the Zimbabwe community and also have family ties in Rima. He has since been identified by his aliases, Alwain. Some people call him Marcelo. Yeah, man. So good riddance to you, Alwain or Marcelo or whatsoever they want to call you and the crew. Yeah, man. And another update, my peeps. Now, in yesterday morning's vlog, I made mention of this man presented on your screen, who is said to be from the communities of Rima and also that of Pink Lane. Said to be a national footballer back in the days, but escaped through the border and started to live amongst the regular members of Chan Public in the diaspora. Now, he has since been identified as Jeremy Robinson, but more popularly known in the streets as Stone Love. He lost his life in the streets of Queens, New York City. Now it is said that they were at a party and all hell broke loose and he was found suffering from carnap wounds, laying there lifeless. Paramedics tried their best to save his life, but that was proven futile. Now, a whole heap of things attack since he met his demise. The streets is saying that he lost his life to the hands of criminal elements aligned to the fatherless crew in Rima simply because he's related to a criminal element with them call Blacks. Now, we're going to get to Blacks further on in the news. And Blacks is the alleged Nakis and Clappis who clap with another criminal element known as Usher in recent days. And as I stated, we can get back to that in due time. But on the spot news media made his checks, did some digging. I will get to understand, say, upon him that is Stone Love going through the border and reaching in America. Him start link up with a top criminal element from Denham Town in a pink lane section there so, known as Major Blue. Now him and Major Blue steps on Gawan party. And the two of them there at the party and them and some Yankee jump off. It is said that one of the Yankee them pop off him strap and start knock it and clap it. And Major Blue steps on, take away him bat, run left him. And him pick up the car and them and drop a ground. Hence, that's how he met his demise. Now, as I stated, all what is going around is just speculations at the time, yet to be totally confirmed by on the spot news media. 
but I'm just giving you what the streets is saying. But as always, on the spot news media will most definitely decipher the truth and definitely update you in subsequent newscast. But anyway, make we continue. And still in the Kingston Western Police Division, we have a list a wanted Nakis and Clappis that was released by the Denham Town Police CIB, that's the Criminal Investigation Section of the Denham Town Police Station. And they are basically saying that them mania need to link them up before 6 p.m. today. Now heading that list is a criminal element identified as Mario Morgan, but more popularly known in the streets as Day Day. The next man has since been identified as Damari Mitchell, otherwise known as Chinaman. The next man identified as Avanash Bryson. The next man identified as Romeo Coburn, otherwise known as Bay. The next man identified as Odean Brown, but more popularly known in the streets as Shane. The next man identified as Rohan Edwards, otherwise called Khanhead. The next man identified as Gary McLeod, otherwise known as Coco Reds. The next man identified as Michael Irons, but more popularly known in the streets as Blacks or Blackie. We can get back to him specifically. The next man identified in the streets as Joseph Reed otherwise known as Joe, a man only known by his alias as Bunny Scott. He's of a Bocas address in Rima. A next man only known by his alias as John Senior. He's of a Third Street address. So detectives have identified these criminal elements as persons of interest and they need to get with them before the day ends. Additionally, anyone having any information surrounding the whereabouts of these criminal elements are asked to contact the Denham Town Police CIB at 876-948-6443 or Crime Stop 311. And as always, if you don't trust the police them, you can link on the spot news media or any like-minded vlogger of your choice furnish us with the information. And of course, we will most definitely pass it on to the relevant authorities who can make effective change. Yeah, man. Now, back to this criminal element here. Yeah. The criminal element identified as Michael, but more popularly known in the criminal underworld as Blacks. Now, this is Blacks presently on your screen. Blacks is said to be the man where Clapway, this criminal element also known as Usher. So the ongoing gang conflict in the place are going really bad. It go on really bad to a point where Blacks end up lose Fim Uncle. An uncle who never even deal with Blacks because of Blacks criminal background. But because of his relation to blacks, this criminal element here, presently on your screen, identified as Jaheem McGregor, slap with black's uncle, Billius, and then right away, without delay, Lucky end up lose for him father. So you know, so this warrior in Arima, I go get sour and sour. Yeah, man. There is no end in sight for this war right now because Lucky lost his father. I'm pretty sure say, Black's not really too care about the uncle still because the uncle never deal with him because Black's a live a criminal lifestyle and the uncle just a try to walk a straight and narrow path and stay far from him but still end up lose fame three pints. So Jai McGregor, him, a the man who slap with Black's uncle. And this criminal element here, Black's a the man who slap with Usher. Now, Black's have a little crossmite girl. And she is also Mark Fadette. 
And this is the Krasmaid presently on your screen known as Mummy. Now she is marked for death because of her criminal involvement in everything we are going. As me always telling us still, you know, the females they might not squeeze the chigger, but they're heavily involved in a lot of the slackness we wanna see a go on. They might press them like a boy a button if you go carry out some dirt settings on some people where them may have had an altercation with in the past that was not physical, more of a verbal altercation. And they felt disrespected. So them send them criminal man if you go carry out the dirt. Yeah man. But this little Krasmite girl is still in her. She should have learned. Because it seems as if she forget. Say our son, Zidane, get slapped with about two years ago. With action pack man them make a man go step and near him food and broke the plate. But then again, probably that's the reason why she is heavily invested in criminality. Forget back to who took her son's life. But you play with fire, you're gonna get burned. And right now, mummy, you are most definitely marked for death. Yeah, man. So the two latest casualty of the Rima war is that of Lucky's father, as I stated earlier. He has since been identified as 45-year-old Kerry Parker Gunter. Man them can him up, taking him three pints, leaving him lifeless along 3rd Street that I choose the man in. So the next man will end up lose Fim three pints. Is a man identified as 24-year-old Tavin Peart, said to be of Greenville in Mandeville, Manchester. Him get can up along 4th Street Monday night. So the Rima war most definitely has intensified to a different level and on the spot news media will most definitely be carrying this exclusive content in subsequent newscast yeah man because i'm pretty sure that these criminal elements are hell-bent in taking revenge so this war is most definitely far from over now, the police them put a major dent in the criminal elements armory over there in Eastern Kingston. So the security forces have seized this M4 assault rifle. Now just pay careful attention to the firearm that members of the military carry. The ones that carry the short version of the rifles. It's basically the exact same rifle, military grade rifle. And this one is fitted with a scope along with other paraphernalia. All of this was found along Mountain View Avenue during a targeted raid yesterday by the police and the soldier them. So whilst conducting the search of the premises, the weapon and the following items were seized. One magazine one inside holster, one ballistic vest, a pair of knee pads, four rifle slings, and 55 5.56 mm rounds of ammunition. The era is alleged to be frequent by members of the Jake's Road gang. And this, my friends, is most definitely a major dent in the criminal underworld yeah man so another decent spot of work again by the squad of them now the last thing that we're gonna talk about my peeps is that the police high command have given instructions for the cib headquarters to lead the investigation into the fatal knockings and clappings of the westmoreland duo siblings they were seen in a viral video being buried in a shallow grave the bodies seen in the video are believed to be those of 22-year-old Kenesha Modi and that of her brother, 20-year-old Kenrick Modi, presently on your screen. The mother of the siblings and also the father is appealing to the public to assist in locating their remains. Now we are going to hear from Deputy Commissioner of Police Fitz Bailey. He has given a comment that the Nakis and Clappis will be caught. Now we're going to hear from the DCP as he weighs in on this latest spirit of violence affecting our country. Listen. What I will assure the public is that the 
police will get the perpetrators. We are going to find them and we are going to deal with them according to law. We will use all our resources and in fact from the level of headquarters, CID headquarters, I have directed that the investigation be led from there and all I will say at this time without getting into specifics, we are going to find the perpetrator. I want to say to the family members, I have not yet spoken to the mother, it's very unfortunate and I want to express condolences. Irrespective of how an individual you someone, they do not deserve that type of debt. Now anyway my peeps, remember to like, share, subscribe to the channel, stay tuned to On The Spot News Media as I continue to bring you fresh news and updates in subsequent newscasts. On The Spot News Media. Yeah man.